Hey everyone, you might have seen this bird on the screen before, spreading their wings out in front of a stretch of water. These birds are called cormorants, and Australia has five different species, along with one lookalike, the Australasian darter. By the end of this video, you'll be able to identify them all. This video is for anyone who wants to improve their bird identification skills. We have a lot of species to cover today, so let's get this show on the road. Here's a quick overview. First I'll provide some background on the cormorant bird family. I'll then introduce you to each species. Because the Australasian data is often confused with cormorants, we'll also meet this species in this section. After this, we'll cover calls and I'll answer the question, what's with the wing spreading? In the next section, we'll compare and contrast all of today's species so you can identify them all with ease. I've also added tips on how you can avoid common misidentifications. Next, I'll provide a cheat sheet with all the key details covered in this video. We'll then finish off with a quiz to test and reinforce your new skill. Let's kick off with some details about the cormorant family. Cormorants are designed for swimming. With their streamlined bodies, webbed feet, and the ability to see underwater, they can zip through the water with ease. A hooked beak helps them snatch fish, the primary food in their diet. They have a flexible lower jaw and gullet that allows them to swallow fish whole, sometimes to comical levels, with fish being almost the size of the cormorant's head. In fact, great cormorants are typically no taller than a standard umbrella, but manage to eat half a kilogram of fish per day. This can be up to 30 small fish, or one giant catch. The word cormorant is derived from Latin, which translates back into English as sea raven. Outside Australia, sometimes cormorants are referred to as shags. The great thing about cormorant identification is that males and females look the same. This means that we have less to memorise. Let's meet our first species. The little pied is the smallest cormorant found in Australia. It has white lower parts, and the upper parts are black with a noticeable black stripe that travels along the back of the neck and head. It has a small crest and a long tail. The key identifier for this species is its yellow bill. The term pied in bird speak means black and white, and little in the species name refers to the noticeable size difference between our next species, the pied cormorant. The pied cormorant is a much larger species with a similar black and white pattern of the little pied. Because the pied and the little pied share almost the same name, for clarity, I'll be referring to this species by its alternative common name, the Australian pied cormorant, throughout the rest of this video. The primary identifier for this species is the yellow patch between the eyes. A secondary identifier is the large off-white hooked bill. Adults may be sporting a blue eye ring and a pink patch on the cheeks. To help us remember this later, for all species of cormorant, let's think of any coloured markings on their faces as makeup. The little black cormorant is almost the same size as the little pied we saw earlier. It appears completely black from afar and when wet, but up close or dry, some sections may appear dark grey. This species is the easiest to identify. If a cormorant is black with no noticeable white or colour patches, then you've got yourself a little black. If you get a chance to see this one up close, check out their stunning turquoise coloured eyes. Other species share this eye colour, but it really stands out in the little black. The great cormorant is the largest cormorant found in Australia. They are also found in Europe, Asia, Africa and the Americas. This species is primarily black. They often have a white patch just above the legs. The key identifier for this species is the yellow and white colouring on the face and the throat pouch. As mentioned earlier, we'll be referring to these coloured facial markings as makeup. The grey cormorant isn't the best name because it doesn't describe its appearance. It would be better if it was called great black cormorant, but this is the name we're stuck with. Next is the black-faced cormorant. It's the only cormorant exclusive to Australia. All the other species can be found in other places around the world. The black-faced 
has a similar pattern to the Little Pied and the Australian Pied. However, their black cap extends down from the top of the head, around the back of the eye, and reaches their bill. Unlike other black and white cormorants, this species has a dark grey bill. This species is often confused with the Little Pied. I'll show you how they differentiate the two later. Okay, we're done with the cormorant introductions, but today, we have a surprise visitor. Australasian darters are often misidentified as cormorants. They are distantly related, but have similar habits like fishing, swimming, and drying out their wings. Darters have three different kinds of plumage, which adds to the identification challenge. The plumage we have here is the male. They are all black, with a white stripe on the lower face down to the neck. They also have a chestnut patch in front of the throat, which you can't see here. The females look similar. They do have a dark back, but their undersides are white. There is no neck coloration, and the stripe seen on the male is harder to notice. Immatures look like the females, but the darker upper sides are almost white. Focusing purely on plumage colour or pattern makes it easy to confuse darters with different cormorant species. An easy way to tell if you're looking at an Australasian darter is to ignore the plumage colour and look for the long snake-like neck and sharp pointed bill. Cormorant necks are much shorter and they have hooked bills. Okay, we're done with these introductions. Let's see where you can find today's species. Most of today's cormorant species are widespread across coastal and inland Australia, providing the area has a decent body of water. It's likely you'll be able to find most of today's species not far from your location. Please note the following regarding distributions. In Tasmania, darters are not present, and Australian pied cormorants are rarely reported. The bigger sized cormorants are typically found around deeper water sources. The black-faced cormorant only occurs in coastal areas in Tasmania and along the southern mainland coast. Cormorants are primarily silent. When they do call, it's a series of guttural croaks, wheezing and grunting. They sound similar across species and learning to differentiate the calls will provide little benefit. So we'll skip the cormorant calls today, but our special guest, the Australasian data, is very vocal and has a unique call. Let's have a listen. Try to commit this one to memory and see if you can hear it next time you visit a wetland or anywhere that has water. You've probably noticed cormorants or darters standing out in the open with their wings spread out wide. What's this about? Most birds have a preen gland, which produces oil that the bird rubs over its feathers to make them water resistant. This is why in most birds, their plumage doesn't become waterlogged when they swim. Recall earlier how all of today's species are great swimmers and divers? Evolution has provided cormorants and darters with a reduced preen gland. Therefore, a lot less oil is being applied to their plumage. So, rather than repelling water, their plumage soaks it up. This reduces buoyancy, allowing them to dive much deeper and swim faster than if they had standard issue preen glands. These enhanced abilities give them access to food that other birds cannot reach. Though this adaption works well to capture food, once back on land, having waterlogged plumage makes flight difficult, leaving them vulnerable. Drying off after each meal is safer, just in case they need to quickly take off to escape a predator. Now let's jump into how you can tell today's species apart. In this next section, I'll guide you through a series of attributes used for cormorant identification. After this, we'll use these attributes as part of the overall identification process. First, we have size. The diagram shows how today's species compare to each other. Size isn't always the best attribute for bird identification, mainly because we don't always have a comparative species in the same area. But, as I said earlier, there is a lot of distribution overlap, so you might be lucky and maybe you will see the species together. 
the main takeaway from this is that the little cormorants are usually much smaller than the larger ones on the right. A valuable technique to identify those tricky black and white coloured cormorants is to look for trousers. Trousers are black stripes of feathers that run down the legs. These are typically only visible when the birds are perched or on land. All black and white cormorants wear trousers, the little pied is an exception. On rare occasions, you may spot an immature little pied with trousers, and in New Zealand, sometimes their bodies can be almost entirely black. However, in Australia, little pied adults are always trouser free. This knowledge provides us with a shortcut to identification. When we see a black and white cormorant without pants, we know it must be a little pied adult. If the cormorant is wearing pants, we'll need to examine it for further clues before deciding which species it belongs to. The face markings are a key component of cormorant identification. Recall earlier how the Australian pied and great cormorant have coloured markings or makeup on their faces? An easy way to remember the names of cormorants with face markings is to think the larger cormorants like Australian pied and great are adults and therefore can wear makeup, whereas little pied and little black are children and are not allowed to wear makeup. This rule allows us to easily separate four of the most common cormorants and is useful for when we are unable to gauge their size. Immature cormorants resemble their adult counterparts, but black sections are usually brown, white areas may appear dirty, and facial marks may be present but not as obvious. The identifying markers I'm discussing in this video apply to both immatures and adults. Just be aware that plumage may vary for young cormorants. Now, wouldn't it be great if there was something consistent between the immature and adult cormorants? This leads us to our next attribute, bill colour. The colour of the bill remains consistent throughout their lives, and is a very helpful way to differentiate cormorant species, especially the black and white ones. The little pied is the only cormorant with a yellow bill. The Australian pied has an off-white or flesh-coloured bill and the remaining species have dark grey bills. Phew, that's a lot of attributes we can use. I've put them into this decision tree so you can step through them methodically. Let's step through the process together using this bird as an example. Starting at the top, the first step is to rule out whether it's a data that we're looking at. Does it have a snake-like neck or is it a pointed instead of hooked bill? This one's bill looks hooked to me. Next, is the plumage black and white, or is it just black? Ours is black and white. Does it wear trousers? Yes. Is it wearing makeup? Yes. So, we must have the Australian pied cormorant here. Please note, it's not necessary to follow this process every time you encounter one of today's species. There are some handy shortcuts that you can use to identify the species just by observing one characteristic. I've included all these shortcuts in the cheat sheet section later. In the next section, I'll show some common identification mix-ups you might encounter in the field. The little pied and black-faced cormorants both reside on the southern mainland coast and in Tasmania. If you are in this area, you should be mindful that these two species look very alike. In addition to the process covered earlier, having a bit of extra evidence will improve our identification confidence. Let's have a look at them side by side. The black on the little pied is typically separated by this white strip, and the black never goes around the eye like we see in the black faced. Also remember that black faced always wears trousers, but in most cases, little pieds do not. If the cormorant we see isn't wearing trousers, then we know it's a little pied. Sometimes plumage color can throw us off. This bird has black plumage and looks to have a yellow throat patch that we could consider makeup. So, could it be a great cormorant? It's actually a male data with its mouth and throat open. The first thing we should do when seeing a cormorant or look alike is to search for that snake neck and sharp pointed dart like bill. If it has these, then we have a data on our hands. As promised, 
I've put together this cheat sheet so you can quickly identify today's species in the field. If you spot any of the items in the key identifiers column, then you've used the shortcut to the bird's identity. No further work is required. For example, you see a cormorant with a yellow hooked bill. You found yourself a little pied. You don't have to take all this in right now. I've put a link in the video notes so you can download this cheat sheet along with the decision tree covered earlier. Okay, we've covered a lot of concepts in this video, which can be overwhelming at first. But trust me, the more you practice your identification skills, the easier it becomes. Let's run through a quiz to see how many of today's species you can identify. See if you can identify this one. It's an Australasian data. Note the pointed bill and long neck. This next one's looking rather chill. It's a great cormorant. See how it's mostly black and has facial markings, therefore it can't be a little black. And the only other black cormorant we have is the great cormorant. Next, we have a good balancer. This one's a black faced. Note the black reaches behind the eye and it has a grey bill. Here's the next one. This one is a little black. Note the absence of facial marks. Next up. This one looks like it has a pretty long neck, but it's not long enough and the bill doesn't look pointed enough for it to be a data. We can see a yellow dot and it's black and white, so it's an Australian pied. And lastly, this one's a little pied, with its yellow bill and lack of facial markings. That's it for the Australian cormorants and data. Next time you notice a bird spreading its wings out by the water, try to identify it. I hope this video has been helpful. If it was, give it a like, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Happy cormorant identification, and catch you next time.